Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Number 13, Florida. Number 11, Kentucky. Set to do battle. Identical records, 23-5, and 13-2 and two in conference play, and they are tied atop the SEC standings just a week and a half before Bridgestone Arena in Nashville and the conference tournament. It's a rematch of what happened three weeks ago. That was all Florida, and now Kentucky, Jim Spinarco, has got to do it without their starting point guard today. Yeah, and interesting in uh, Fox's, if you haven't seen him play, he goes up and down the floor, Brad. He's like lightning, so he's not on the floor today. Kentucky will still go quickly. They'll still look to push it up and down the floor, but ironically with this team, usually you think of the freshmen, probably three seniors are going to be impact players on this floor today. Speaking of speed, let's take a look at our AT&T fast analysis. Well, John Calipari practiced yesterday with Kentucky, really tried to focus on this as the Gators come down the floor. Now watch how the Gators spread the floor to get to the wings. In the old days, they were going for layups. And look at Kentucky, four guys in the paint try to find the basketball, but what that makes it more difficult to do is to try to get out to find the shooters. Here's the lineups, and again, the change in the Kentucky lineup with Mulder starting in place of the Aaron Fox with Monk Briscoe, Adebayo and Gabriel, Casey Hill, Kayvon Allen in the backcourt with Robinson, Leon, and Hayes up front for Mike White in his second year as the head coach in Gainesville, and John Calipari his eighth year as a head man here in Lexington. One of the great rivalries in this conference for the 138th time, the Gators and the Wildcats set to have at it with about 24,000 of our closest friends in attendance. And here we go. And Brad, you mentioned that first game about three weeks ago. One of the things that Kentucky did not bring to the table in the first 10 minutes of that game was an energy level and enthusiasm. I think it's built in here at Rupp Arena. They should be very high in terms of being ready to play. First three-pointer won't go for Malik Monk. We just touched on the ability of the Gators to run it up and down the floor. But prior to the game, Mike White did mention they'll be a little more selective than just getting up and down in a running game with this Kentucky team on their home floor. Avon Allen's going to open with a three and knocks it down. And again, Florida in their third game without their big defensive presence on the inside. John Agunu out with a torn ACL. So he's got a lot of rehab to do, and they have to play a little bit differently and a little smaller than they would have been. That's why I'm thinking out of bio should be a factor underneath for Kentucky as they turn it over, go the other way. And the runner will go and just go with the rebound. He'll try to push it all the way himself. Offensive foul. The fans aren't going to like it, but that's a good call. And one of the things early to touch on is Briscoe's ability to make good decisions. He has struggled and really has had just about as many turnovers as assists throughout the course of the last seven games. So not a good decision there to start. You're going to stop on that one, look to the wings. A little pull-up jump shot makes sense also. And the reason with that being so important, he's the leader of this team. Yes. It's his team. And if he doesn't play well, sometimes his troops don't follow very well. Casey Hill on the baseline makes it a 5 million game. And Hill played well in that first game at Florida. At 21 points, did a good job rebounding the basketball, six assists. Here's an open look for Gabriel. Too strong. Rebound kept alive by out of Io. Monk got his man to go pass, and he missed the three. Back to back misses by Malik Monk, who only had 11 points the first go around between these two teams. Out of Io, quick to push that ball out to the perimeter, too. Wow, Florida off to a great start. Justin Leon and John Calipari seen enough already in the opening two minutes. Last five games, Leon has been playing very, very well. And they come out here in a comfort zone just as if they're on their home floor and shooting the ball very well. 8 nothing to open up the first couple of minutes. Florida in front of Kentucky, and it's a rematch of three weeks ago. And this is reminiscent a little bit of what happened at the O-Dome. Kentucky only shot 38%. And 54 to 29, the rebounding. Game. Yeah, that is the number that really stands out with the 54. And you would think now, basically, that the Gators are going to really try to keep this as compact as possible with their man-to-man -man out front. It looks like a 1-3-1 one, one when they start it, but then they go man-to-man. Gabriel, -man. watch. That's a good call. Kentucky, too many turnovers the first time. They had too many the other night against Missouri as well. They had 17. They've got three already. Derek Willis will check in. Good three-point shooter and a senior. You know, 
Coach Calipari told us yesterday, he said, you know, we're 29 games in, and I'm in the same spot I am seem to be every year because you've got so many players that are one and done, and he said, I still haven't quite figured this group out. And I'm sure he's scratching his head a little bit right now. Yeah, and I think other teams, you know, they started out very, very strongly in the beginning of the year because nobody knows who they have on their floor. Right. Right. Willis slapped that one away. You know, and as the season progresses, other teams get to see what they can do, and then they prepare for them better. But here's a nice close defensively. You know, if you don't get that effort by Mulder just then, then the big guy doesn't get a chance. Willis to come in and block the shot. Have a problem with the Cal going quickly to different guys off the bench. Obviously, the ADs need this guy to shoot well, and he's 0 for 3 so far. And a whistle of a foul underneath. Devin Robinson will pick it up the first foul. The guy in Florida who has to be careful is Hayes, making sure another front line guy because they've depleted a little bit. He does not need to pick up needless fouls in the front line. And going to be a touch foul on Casey Hill. Well, one of the tendencies, too, with this Kentucky team, too, Brad, when you think about it, they're, they're guard-oriented. They like to go up and down in transition. And I think, quite candidly, sometimes they forget that they have a pretty good player underneath. And Adebayo, who come, coming off the Missouri game, 22 points, career-high 15 rebounds. Let's see if they can get him some touches. And they just seem to kind of go and look away from him. Oh, and that one swatted off the glass. Big block by Hayes. He's trailing this play, too. He's wide open. And missed him close. Good look, though. Scramble for the loose ball picked up by Hawkins. Briscoe has to hold up as Kentucky didn't have numbers on that break. And it's a good thing the fans don't stand up in this building until they score. <laughs> what are over six, <laughs> seven? Oh, he got fouled up. <laughs> Avon Allen picks up the foul for Florida. And you look at Briscoe coming around the corner. That's what he has to do. He has to continue to play. And John Calipari mentioned it yesterday. These guys have to really pick up their games individually and be more consistent with their games as an individual. And that's going to carry over and make the team that much better. I think that's part of what Kentucky has trying to figure out with Coach Cal just saying, you know, if you think about it, Brad, if a, on a 1 to 10 scale, if a guy comes out night in and night out and he's a 7, and he plays like a 7 most of the nights, but if he goes if he's a 7, some nights he comes out and plays like a 9, and other nights he comes out as a 3, yeah. as a coach you start to say, I mean, what is this guy going to give me? You know, and you start to wonder too much. At least out of bio gave him two free throws. Right. Took him three and a half minutes to score. Nice hesitation. Chioza in for Florida, and he's going to get his first shot. Ooh. It's an offensive foul, or is it not? Yes. Well, Chioza, on the other hand, usually he's like a coach on the floor. Generally makes good decisions. A little stop jump there, but he, you notice how his body kept going with the momentum? He did the right thing initially, but because he was going a little quicker than he needed to, his momentum carried him into the, de into the defender. Kentucky four minutes into the game, still without a field goal. Through this weave outside, try to drive by and go to fill out front. Here's the fill. Hawkins tried to feed the post, had it kicked by Allen. That'll bring us to the timeout with 15.50 remaining. All Florida early. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Buick with seven expectation-shattering models. AT&T. And by Budweiser, pursuing the American dream since 1876. So Kentucky in a hole here early. They're definitely a different team without De'Aaron Fox out today with a knee contusion suffered in the game against Missouri the other night. And, Jim, it's pretty obvious they're not the same when he's not playing point. No, that's for sure. And, and at the beginning of this game, we started to think possibly he might be headed to the locker room to get changed, to get back on the floor. They need him that, that much. And the other part of it is where he slows them down or they are slowed down without him on the floor. Believe it or not, Kentucky basically scores and uses possessions only 14 seconds of the clock. Canyon Berry also hobbled 
with a bad ankle, only played nine minutes here tonight and went over South Carolina. He hits the floor for the first time this afternoon. Watch him with backdoor cuts at the offensive end of the floor. Very tricky. Here's Briscoe on a drive. Out of bio, offensive rebound, it scores. That's all because of the drive by Briscoe is fine. Getting a shot up and making sure you get it to the glass. And even better, if you miss it, getting it on the rim. And Hayes tried to get a block, and that opened it up. Bam has Kentucky's four points. On field goal, their first one, and two from the line. Joza, in 15, out of bio, the rebound. Hawkins will bring it back out. And Willis threw it away. So if you get good action at the offensive side of the floor, watch defensively now. It opens it wide up for offensive rebounding. One of the things that the Gators have to be very, very careful with. I know they dominated the board at home in that first matchup. Yes. Out of bio who is really, really active on the class. Number five rebounder on the SEC. Ivaris Hayes trying to lean in. Nice move with the left hand, just didn't finish. And a battle for the rebound tie up. And possession arrow will stay with floor. And Leon was in the right spot at the right time. So here's that jump. Watch Lehan on the left side. He gets this ball, but what does he do? He brings it down and kind of buries it. It's almost as if he's going to tuck it under, into his, underneath his shirt. Made himself 5'7 there. Yeah, he, he sure did. Right, he played into the shorter guy. Chioza in a little trouble getting it inbound. Jumper is good by Kayvon Allen. Coming off a 26-point game the other night. And he's got five here. And he does two things very well, and he showed both of them there. He doesn't kind of just lag around the screen. He comes in around it with a sense of urgency and gets off the floor for his jumper. Malik Mark is over, and he's got a warm-up for Kentucky. He's going to have problems scoring. They've had an up-and-down year. Started very strong. 17-2. Defeated North Carolina in a great game, 106-103 out in Vegas. And then they went 1-3, and three, lose some leads, lost to Kansas here. The last five, they've won them ever since they lost to Florida, but it hasn't necessarily been pretty. And if you've ever been around Lexington, Kentucky, I wasn't here for five minutes yesterday, and the guy that dropped me off at the hotel was complaining about the lackluster play of Kentucky. That's the way everybody is. Okay. Somebody told me he was concerned about the tip or lack thereof. <laughs> Kayvon Allen knocks it down, a chance for a three-point play. But, you know, Brett, get back to that, what we just talked about at the beginning. Kentucky likes to go up and down, and teams are not allowing them to run. But you go behind the screen, little hesitation, and Allen is very, very tricky with his shots also. Even though he had a guy on his right side, generally a right-handed shooter has trouble getting that shot off with the defender coming around his, his power side. Monk's going to sit. He picked up the foul. Allen trying to get an old-fashioned three-point play and rips it. So he's off to a great start. He's their leading scorer at 13.6 a game, but that's only 18th in the conference, so they spread it around pretty well. Yeah, they're not afraid to have different leading scorers, and that's one of the things in their nine consecutive wins they've had. Yeah, nine straight wins and have seven different leading scorers. Right. Adebayo misses on the hook. Gioza's coming down like a orange streak here. Allen, heat check. At that time, what a great offensive rebound by Hayes. But getting it down the floor really makes difficulty finding the shooters and finding teams to block guys out. Double digit lead. That's only the second field goal for Kentucky on the afternoon, and it's Mulder on a drive. Number five at all times. He's feeling it right now. There it goes. He's got it. Nice call. John Calipari is beside himself right now over there on the Kentucky bench. Trying to urge some defense out of the Wildcats. You know, when you look, just watch in the middle and watch this organization of Kentucky trying to figure out where are the guys, and that's all a byproduct of pushing the ball down the floor in a hurry. And here's just a basic, you better come out and guard me, because if not, I'm going to rip it. And he's just about tore into those that net. 
the way he's shooting right now. Florida has shocked the crowd here and the Kentucky Wildcats with a 12-point lead in the opening seven minutes. And I know there's an impact of not having Fox on the floor, but can't be this this bad. It shouldn't be anyway. Yeah. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to Florida, Kentucky, or your favorite team. Get instant coverage of every moment from every angle. Download the CBS Sports app today. Relax, guys. Foul was on Kayvon Allen. That's his second, and that changes the complexion of things for Mike White considerably, I think. It sure does. Yeah. goes. Never been a great free throw shooter. Better this year than last. But now Kayvon Allen, who's been red hot, will have to sit with two fouls. And I like that substitution, too. Even though he's an, you know, a fairly experienced sophomore at this point in the season, the fact that you've just played about nine minutes of tough basketball, a little tired, so get him out of there, take advantage of giving him a rest. He'll be back, especially if they lose some of his speed. But this is a good time, a good substitution. Kyle Rimmer is the newest gator on the floor. Both Casey Hill and Chioza, both point guards, basically, also out there for the Gators. He just has to play smart, no turnover. Well, there it is. Yep. <laughs> And he was left in no man's land by Chioza just then. Briscoe tried to kick out on the drive and Barry with a steal. He's going to run with Willis on that bad ankle. That won't make it feel any better. No, and, and I thought that Barry was doing the right thing just then. He had a big in Willis running the floor. Willis at 6'9", but watch how fast he makes some action and gets back into a very good sound defensive position, and then Barry is just thrown off by it. Opportunity for Kentucky to get it down to single digits before the next media timeout. And still Malik Monk scoreless as he was in the first half in Gainesville three weeks ago. Kentucky not getting it to their offense as quickly as they normally do. How about that? Isaac Humphreys, well, give me a shot. See, one of the things that Florida has to be careful about, okay, they get off to this big start, but they also have to be smart with the basketball so they don't let any Kentucky runs come their way. Robinson with a pull up, that rims out. Willis with the rebound. Yeah, this is where I'd be careful right now with this possession. Just a little shift of momentum if they score here. Willis, good three point shooter. Got it. Yep. Fans are off their seats now. They were sitting for a long time until Kentucky scored. Now all of a sudden they're saying, hey, you know what? Maybe this is the big blue home. First it's Humphreys off the bench from the elbow. And then even bigger, number 35, the senior from three, and it's down to six. And Malik Monk, Kayvon Allen, certainly no strangers. They were high school rivals in Arkansas, faced off in the 2014 state championship game. Allen's North Little Rock squad beat Malik Monk in Bentonville, 66-59. Kayvon had 28, Malik had 25. So far today, Kayvon's got two fouls, but he's got 11 to lead the way for the Gators. Malik Monk, scoreless so far, and he only had 11 the first time these two teams got together. He's got to warm up, or they're in trouble. No question about it. He's got to find his rhythm, but not hunt down shots. Just let this game come to him. Be relaxed and get into the flow of it. Allen, on the other hand, is coming off a 26-point game against South Carolina, averaging 18 points a game over the last three. Here's one of the most difficult decisions of the early afternoon. When does Mike White decide to put him back on the exactly. floor? Good point. And how does he substitute him if he goes late? If he can get five minutes out of him, tell him, don't pick up your third. You'll probably see him on the bench with two and a half or under to really avoid a third. But he scored six straight with Allen sitting. And after starting 0 for 7, they hit four of their last six shots. And Robinson missed his last two. And Briscoe with a rebound. Yeah, Kentucky and the fans have not forgotten, even with the timeout, that they have that 6-0 break going. So we'll see what happens if they can continue to get some rhythm. They'll probably look for Monk at some point to free him up to shoot over Chioza. There he is behind oh, the pick. Oh, almost got it back. Good hands by Chioza. Here comes the Gators. Calipari went hunting for Monk just then. They need to get him a shot. No doubt. Here's Barry outside. And rebound knocked out of bounds by Devin Robinson. Let's start with Lowe's for this meaningful moment. 
He owes it a triple double. 12, 12, and 10 against Missouri earlier this month. And he did it off the bench. That's not easy. It's not easy to get one of those. <laughs> no, unless you're Russell all. Westbrook or a big O, somebody like that. But. Nice drop. And Joe's, by the way, is a six footer, too, with yep. those numbers. But if, if Briscoe can get on track, also, Mike scoring, Briscoe, confident play, floor game. And Florida's missed about three in a row, and that 12 point lead's been cut down to four with Kentucky looking for more. There's another bad pass by Monk. Casey Hill weaving through traffic. Ooh. And ball out of bounds. Hawkins thought it was last touch by Robinson, so did the fans at Rupp Arena. A good example of trying to stop a fast guard coming at you who knows you're twisting and turning, but defensively right to the very end, Kentucky stayed with it, and Hill ended up having to make a more difficult shot. So here's the decision number one. Yep. Javon Allen coming back in just under the 10-minute mark. Florida hasn't scored in over three minutes. Barry. Out of bio, up high for the rebound. 35% from long range. So that's a shot they'll take and they want. Out of bio gets a touch. Missed twice. See if he gets a third shot. Willis hits the deck, and this time it'll be Kentucky basketball. Out of bio gets the ball. He's 6'10", and he gets off the floor in a hurry. Very good vertical leap. But then look where the ball goes. Again, you know, Brad, you pointed out before down the other end with Leon. He brought it down to the little guys. Same thing there. That ball gets down below the waist for a big guy. You're going to have the swarm coming all over you from the Gators. There he'll sit for Florida, Kentucky. Monk catches it out near midcourt with nine and a half to go in the half. Malik Monk's 0 for 4. We say that only because when he gets hot, as I saw him get in Vegas, to the tune of 47 points against North Carolina, he can change a game in a hurry. That foul's going to be on Devin Robinson. That's his second. What makes Monday TV's best night of comedy? Well, a lineup of the funniest shows on CBS. Monday, starting at 8, 7 Central. They called that foul on Kivarius Hayes, not on Devin Robinson. Isaiah's hit his last two now. He's had some great games, and then he's had some struggles. The free throw line's been his biggest struggle, but 67% this year, he'll take it over to 46% of last year. He's worked really hard from the line, and shows with the last three that he's nailed. Yeah, and those, those last seven, total of 29 assists and 28 turnovers. Six turnovers the last game out, so... Maybe the home cooking here will help him settle down just a little bit and know that he's going to get more important minutes without Fox playing. 10 0 run right now, Jim. Wow. And another missed shot. Robinson was looking for a foul, didn't get it. Kentucky's got a chance to tie or lead. Mulder. No got it. Nope. Offensive foul. Good call. It's the right call. Hayes defensively stepping it up. He positions himself very, very well along the baseline side. Watch, he's sitting there, and once again, the energy level of driving you towards the floor, and Cal doesn't like it. Part of this is also Cal getting excited, getting emotional, because guess what happens? Our friends upstairs yeah. start going a little <laughs> crazier, too. Florida's playing now like they're on the road. First five minutes were played like it was at their home. Exactly. Foul's going to be on Briscoe. That's two on Isaiah. So here comes the little bit of the screen action on top. Pushing and shoving. Yeah. Guys going to start talking to one another. Maybe getting a touch chippy out there. Especially after a 22-point Florida win three weeks ago. Big three there by Justin Leon. That's his second of the game. He's a 41% three-point shooter and showing it. Outside the arc with those strokes. And how many Florida Gator fans watching this game on television are happy to ball? The, the, the net was tripled just then a little bit because it's been a while. Oh, what a block by Hayes. And Hayes does it also with some separation. 
And look at Hayes. He's going to come across and go pretty much straight out. I don't think there's contact there. It's just a little out of off balance at the end of that particular move. Got 47 block shots now on the season. That's number seven in the conference. Kentucky maintains possession, however, with five on the shot clock. Hawkins in the lane. All right. Nice work by Hawkins hanging on to that last toe before he got called for a violation in traveling. Just planted it and just stepped into his shot. Well done. Hawkins and Willis and Mulder, the three seniors that are playing more and more minutes, especially with Aaron Fox out with the injury. And Kentucky picks up the foul with 7.52 remaining in the first half. But the Wildcats have made a run. They've got a lot more in them before we're done, you can bet. Three-point game. Florida jumped out to an 8-0 lead and then a 12-point lead at 18-6. But Kentucky has closed the gap now. Brad Nestler, Jim Spinarco, and, you know, the rebounding difference, we talked about it three weeks ago, and right. it was all Florida. Well, it's all Kentucky right now, and that's helping them. Yeah, their energy level is pretty good. Keep in mind, the last few minutes, though, Florida missing a lot of shots gives, gives Kentucky a nice edge on the defensive rebounding side. But when you think about this game already, Brad, it's two tails. And Allen has really given them a, a good lift with his shooting right from the beginning. I mean, it, he's somebody that if you give a little bit of space to, he'll take advantage of it. But he doesn't need a whole lot of space in shooting the basketball. So a terrific start by the Gators and a nice rebounding effort by Kentucky has put them right back into this game. But keep in mind, this guy, Allen, has two fouls on him. So he has to be very careful on drives to the basket and defensively. When Mike White took him out, Kentucky immediately went on a 6-0 run to change the complexion of the game. And I came on back in there. The late month is yet to score. Here he comes for Kentucky. Quick by Lynn at the other end. There's what they needed. Now they're a different team. Because all of a sudden now Florida has to recognize a streaky shooter has just buried a long range shot. So you have to really lean out and find him, which is going to leave openings to be able to drive. Tied for the first time this afternoon now 21 on the floor. This is where the lack of depth up front may hurt Florida. Robinson's missed about four shots in a row. I think he's got to consider getting it in some of his teammates' hands. You better just keep an eye on him and find him. Nice pass. It hasn't led until right now. That is the impact of Monk. Everybody on the floor starts to look at him, and what happens? You start getting seams going to the basket because of one jump shot that he hit. Florida has missed nine of its last ten. Kentucky in front for the first time today. Now he's got to be careful. Just then, a good example of trying to get that shoulder to get some space in. He's got to play it just straight up and clean. Hill with five on the shot clock. Oh, boy. And they missed two in close. <laughs> Hawkins will kick out. Mulder. That's short. Hawkins in the right spot, but he missed oh, a chipping. He's smiling too as he goes back, shaking his head. How could I miss that one? One of the Florida players is ready to block the defend on it. Kentucky on a 17 to 3 run, and Hill almost threw that one away. Six minutes to go in a half, and Casey Hill says, Let's take a deep breath here, fellas. Allen lost it. Still throwing the ball, last touch by Kentucky. So watch the big fella here, and watch where he ends up, and watch the way also that the Gators try to jump out on Monk just a little bit. They're keeping an eye on him. They get Stone to bite on that one dribble coming around the corner. You see him step up, and that's just enough for the big guy to go to a straight line. For an A to B to get a finish on the dunk. Leon in close. He's hit a couple of three-pointers, and now off the window. And he's got eight. In his last five games, he's played very well. He's starting to pick up his scoring average just under 11 points a game. Hawkins and Mulder out on top. So you see some of the length. Uh, Robinson in particular. Macy Hill with a rebound. Allen's going to take a long one. Got it. Wow. Third three for Kayvon Allen of the half. 
He's got 14. Not only is that a beautiful jumper, but I think more importantly, Brad, it avoids and stops him from driving to the basket. I think they just want to have him play perimeter game as many minutes down the last four and, four and a half, five minutes of this particular half. He's guarding Hawkins right now. If I were Hawkins, I'd drive one at him. Make him guard me. There he does. And he walked with it. Exactly what you called, Jim. Only he hit the deck, and it's another Kentucky turnover, their ninth. This is what Kayvon Allen can do to teams. Watch how deep he is on this yeah. three-pointer. And there's the three-pointer. And look at how far out. And this is pretty much just a basic pull-up. Pretty good range, I'd say. <laughs> Set them up for a back door off the wing or the middle of the floor. Not really Casey Hill James, but missed the shot and a foul to boot. That's going to be on Hayes. Tibarius second. And that's going to put Kentucky at the free throw line. And that's one of the things that Hayes from time to time has picked up in fouls. As Harry talking to Monk just then, to just continue to tell him to relax, but if you have a shot, I'm sure he's telling him to take it. Sam Adebayo at the free throw line where he's hit his first two today. Robinson will come out. Barry will come back in. That's another good substitution. I think Hayes is going to go to the bench. He will. Yep. That'll bring out Keith Stone. Now they who knew on this floor from Florida. Mike White really has to play you know, some chess with his front line to make sure he doesn't get anybody with three fouls in his first half. Florida by three at the four minute mark. Another long range shot, this one short. Mark looking for a shot. No, he's looking for a lob down of Iowa. They threw it away. That's 10 turnovers. Suffered by the Wildcats. How about Allen reading that from the weak side? Got a buy on the rebound and a miss by Leon. Oh, offensive foul on Mark. It's two on him. Just a little out of control. I thought so too. The defender in pretty decent position. And then that arm comes up, and that's exactly where the officials see, and he's got the same view as our cameraman. Florida by three, number 13 Gators, number 11 Wildcats atop the SEC. We know that those two are on the NCAA tournament. There's question marks after you get past that. South Carolina's lost four of its last five after a great start with Frank Martin and his troops, Arkansas, Vandy, Tennessee, Alabama. I don't know. That's not your decision to make, no, I guess. That's where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the SEC tournament at yeah. Richstone Arena in Nashville just a week and a half from now. A little over a week and a half. Mike White's done a great job. Second year as the head coach here. Former Ole Miss point guard. Actually won a game here as the point guard for Ole Miss. He said to us before the game, yeah, yeah. They forgot about me that I might accidentally score a point. I think he had 16 in that game back in 98. And win here. Well, it's a hard place to win. The second decision of the day on Allen. Not on the floor right now. So let's see how the Gators react. They had problems, as you touched on before, Brad, about scoring. And a lot of and a walk on Leon. So there's one turnover to start with Allen on the bench. Now it's Kentucky's turn offensively, and they haven't scored in three and a half minutes. And Monk is not on the court either for Kentucky. He's also got two fouls. Trying to get it to Adebayo. The kick out. Nice ball movement by the Cats. And a pull up by Mulder. That was fell dead at the rim. But it's a good pull up jumper just then, especially off the bounce from the outside. Jim, you were talking about Kayvon Allen being on the bench. He's 5 out of 8. The rest of the team is 5 out of 23. Big difference when he's yeah, on the floor. I would say so. I'm not so sure they're going to give him run in the last two and a half minutes here. Casey Hill will try a triple. And Willis will clear it off and throw it away. 
The reason I say that is you have a three-point lead if you're Florida. Mike White is going to try to milk that as far as he can. And it's just an unforced. That's the second one on Rose. He threw one away intended for Monk, too. And Monk was going left and the ball was going right. And they've just hit their average on the season for 12 turnovers. Yeah, we still got 17 and a half minutes to go. <laughs> exactly. Or rather, 20, 20 and a half minutes on here. Nice tip. Kept alive. And the guards just don't retreat, even though Kentucky's a fast break type of team. Nice, oh, nice oh. look by Chioza. Well, Chioza does two simple things just then. They get a bucket out of it. He doesn't retreat the half court. He sticks around to help and rebound, and then makes a nice play off of it. It's been five minutes for Kentucky without scoring. Hawkins off balance, had it partially blocked, and now he's going to double the problem by picking up the personal. And we take a look. You see, you have to stick around when you're the guards and try to keep yourself in striking distance. Now, most teams will try to go back quickly on defense. You see over here, we got a player who's getting ready to go back defensively. But if you stick around on the offensive glass, sometimes the balls will kick out and you're in a good position to make things happen. Defensively, Kentucky could not get set up. Chris Chioza, a good free throw shooter. Still there. But again, offensive rebound is done by Leon. Just more time for Allen to sit on the bench, too. Leon, three with a left Watch hand. <laughs> and almost missed the backboard. Oh, he has drained a couple earlier. Yeah, had a few people ducking in the first <laughs> front row there. <laughs> Cheerleaders were bailing yeah, out down there. It was coming their way. Yeah. And Casey Hill picks up his second. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Greg Gumbel and Seth Davis get you caught up on all the scores and highlights, plus a preview of the showdown of the ACC coming up. And 10th ranked Duke will take on Miami. It's all coming up, AT&T at the half, half, Greg and Seth. And that's about a minute, 19 seconds from now. Robinson will come in and Leon will sit. Interesting right now with Casey Hill picking up his second with one minute and 19 seconds in the half. Mike White leaves him on the floor as a senior. Allen as a sophomore. Before that free throw, just saying to him, just be real careful out there. Maldo is senior out of Windsor, Ontario. Hasn't missed a free throw this year. Hasn't been there that many times, but he's 10 for 10. And he just ended a five-minute and 44-second scoring drought for Kentucky. And he's missed four games earlier with an illness, so... He's trying to get on track and playing well and getting his game together. The last six games, he's been playing pretty well and shooting it from the, the three-point strike pretty well also. Right now, the Kentucky faithful is hoping for a stop and a score on the other end to close the gap here before the break. What have they said? Hill does not want to really drive recklessly into the basket. The Ozer got around his man. Kick out. That's not his game, as you mentioned. Hill's going to have to take it now, though. And again, the offensive rebound underneath by Robinson this time. Well, I don't think they needed to go that quick, though. Well, I think they could have really, really taken that clock down a whole bunch. Kentucky got it stopped. That's the chance. They've got the lead down to Warner to tie it here before halftime. And a little pitch down to the big guy. They're pushing him out there, making him catch it further away from the basket than what he wants. Again, Monk's not on the floor. Down to six to shoot. Willis. Terry got a hand in there the last moment. Out of Iowa underneath, and he missed him close. They still have an opportunity, though. Yeah. Hawkins got the long carom, and he's tripped by Chioza. And they had that last shot, too. The reset of the clock. He really rebounds well. But he brought that ball down. That's the second time that we've caught him bringing it down below his waist. And what are those guards just? They feast on that. Looking to get just a slap, a deflection any way they can to prevent it done. Dominic Hawkins rips the free throw. Uh, seniors out of Richmond, Kentucky. And he can make this a one-point game here with 7.1 to go. He hits the second free throw. I think considering the way Kentucky's played and the problems they've had scoring and the drops they've had, they go to the locker room down one, they'd be happy. Sure would be. That's the blitz, though, coming up the floor right now. Yeah, they're going to be down two at least. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hill got a hustle. Oh. Oh. A good hustle, but he didn't score. Well, we might have a push though, Brad, right before the buzzer. I think you're right. I'm thinking it might be Robinson too. I, I didn't see who went flying, but somebody went flying with a Kentucky jersey on. So watch on the left, number one, right in the middle of your screen, right now, coming down the middle, and bang. And I guess that looks like it might be Gabriel there, is it? Number 32. Watch where number 32 ends up, coming right at us now. There you go. And he hits the basket support. Foul on Robinson, his second. And there's .6 seconds remaining as they just uh, added some time to the clock. We'll take another look at .6s. I've already gone to the scores table, so that's what we're going to have. I knew that Hill was going to try to get there. It almost looks like there's less than that. Yeah, I think so, too. Maybe .3, 4. Let's see, here's the push coming down. Wow. At any rate, this is big. <laughs> he just beat the clock. The right call. When you Gabriel at the free throw line. Talk about changing things. And now he can tie it. And get a 60% shooter to get to the line. That's his first point of the game. Yeah, time for a catch and shoot here. Boy. Chalk those two points up right now. You gotta put it in your back pocket and see at the end of the game if those two free throws aren't huge. They certainly were big at halftime. That's where we are right now from Ruff. End of the first half. Score. Florida 28. Kentucky 28. We'll send you to Greg Gumble in New York with the AT&T at the half after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Chrysler and the all-new Pacifica Hybrid with 84 MPGE. The Quicksilver card from Capital One. And by Zaxby's, indescribably good. for the top spot in the SEC and we're right where we started about an hour ago. Dead even. 28-28. Brad Nessler, Jim Spinarkle. A game of streaks, Jim, right now. Some bad, some good. Kentucky went the last seven minutes to half without a field goal and here they are tied at 28. Yeah, and I think if you're John Calipari in Kentucky, you have 12 turnovers, which is about your average on the season at, in the first half, but you're really winning the battle of the boards. That's right. where they did not win that the first game against Florida. But overall, I think he's got to be happy that they found a way to tie up the score because the way Florida came out, if you remember, Brad, the first four minutes, they were firing. They sure were with Kayvon Allen, especially as we take a look at our first uh, half statistics brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. And that's what we're talking about. 30-17, to 17, it was just flipped the other way three weeks ago down at the O-Dome in Gainesville. And again, Malik Monk only has three points for Kentucky right now. He's not only their leading scorer, he's the number two scorer in the SEC. And he's had some trouble not just with his shot, but his floor game as well. Now, there's been real good attention to detail from Florida's perspective in terms of looking for him and looking at him, forcing him to turn the basketball over where he's had those five in the first half. So he's been out of sorts. And a little bit of that has to do without Fox on the floor setting the table for him also. He's not playing in today's game. Again, if you missed it, De'Aaron Fox, he and Malik Monk make up one of the best freshmen backwards in the country, and he's not playing because of the knee contusion suffered in the Missouri game the other night. And that makes Kentucky a very, very different team. We've been able to see that in the first half today. And Mike White did a terrific job keeping Allen away from his third foul so he can play free and clear now. Casey Hill a little bit out of sorts on the inside and turns it over. That's only the fifth Florida turnover, but it gives Kentucky an opportunity to take the lead here to start the second half. And Hill was only one for eight from the field in the first half, so maybe a couple extra shots for him that they would rather see him set the table for the bigs. 
Justin Leon was four for eight. Kayvon Allen was five for eight. The rest of the team was two for 22. And now Kentucky does take the lead, and that's just what you want to do is get your main guy off early. So part of this is you want to make sure you get your shoulders around, and you see how he gets his right shoulder past Leon, and that's going to give you the direction of where you want to go on the floor as an offensive player, and then his scoring abilities just flat out take over. What you don't want to do is give a shooter that's struggling a free one from 15 feet because he might start lighting it up. Well, he missed wow. the free throw, so it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right on two, I guess. Shoots it at 83% too from the line. Here's Leon. Rings out a three. I think, yeah, there you go. Double follow by Robinson. Robinson's a guy who's got to get on track. He's 0 for 5 in the first half, so he's a guy who has been playing very well, you know, as of late for Florida. But he's been silent at the offensive end. Our fourth tie of the game, even at third. The only thing with Robinson, he's been so erratic with his scoring. Some decent games in February and some not so good. What a foul by Briscoe. Right place, right time. He's got seven. And the other part of that too, Brad, is the fact that you have Willis, who's a very good three-point shooter, so when he misses, he generally doesn't miss bad for long outside kicks. Good drive by Leon and Willis fouls him. So when you have a guy who shoots the ball softly, look where this ball ends up, two feet away. It allows Briscoe to really track it on the offensive end of the floor. And sometimes you get those big clanks that hit the rim and they kick out 10 or 12 feet away and guards have to be around the free throw line to get there. Justin Leon caps off the three-point play. So he's the number two scorer behind Kayvon Allen. Kayvon with 14, Justin Leon 13 now. Good pass there by Leon. Trying to run Monk. You see him now coming off a couple of more screens. Oh, that's a tough shot right there. He drew a foul. And it might be three free throws. Not quite sure where he took off. Casey Hill. Picks up his third foul. Third. That's important too. I think they're thinking what I'm thinking. Let's take a look at where he took off from to see if it's two or three free throws. It's two. Yeah, that's not going to take a long time to figure no. that one out. I almost said to myself as he was shooting that shot, if that one goes in, uh, that was a difficult shot to even think about taking. John Calipari told him yesterday, Malik Monk, when your feet are squared away and you take the jump shot, it's going in every time. When you kick that foot out mm -hmm. and a little bit off balance, which is what he was there, but he got yeah. pushed off balance. And those two things go together, right? Kicking your feet right. a little bit causes you to be uh, off balance. So this is going to be a two free throws. Well, it was taking longer than you said it was going to take. Sure it did. All right, we got it squared we'll away. The There's foot. the left foot. I think the right foot was on the line. <laughs> so two coming up for Malik. We missed his last one. And he rips that one. Now, if you're hungry for laughs, Superior Donuts has plenty. Get your new episode Monday at 9, 8 Central, only CBS. On six points of the game. Been in double figures every game this year. But one of his lower outputs was that Florida game three weeks ago, and he only had 11. And here's the positives of having Chioza coming off your bench. When Hill has his third foul, they don't lose anything from the floor general. Different style, but he likes to attack. He's going to take a three. And he got it. And they give them. They just provide very, very steady play. See if they get out of Iowa yeah. touch on the inside. Yeah, just thinking the same thing. Hasn't been touching it at all. Except on the offensive rebound. Well, there he touched it on his own. On the offensive rebound. About 30 feet away from the hoop. Fresh shot block with the tucker. 
Monster oh. under. Oh. Him up short. And he's trying to get out and running in the first three minutes. He's really actively looking to be more offensive in the first half. Nice a oh, oh man, that, that one had eyes. Yeah, the beauty of that pass too, Brad, if you notice how he just delayed and held the ball, and I think his shoulders started to tilt backwards towards half court to freeze the defenders. Well, it pretty, and it's a four-point Florida lead. Monk, long three. Yes. I think somebody sitting next to me said, if both of your feet are squared, <laughs> and you were the messenger, right, from Calipari, if both of your feet are squared, you're going to make the shots. If you're kicking and off balance, you're not. And that was a perfect example to your point. He's got ten now. And he's made it a one-point game. Foul on Briscoe. Nice job by Devin Robinson getting his man on the air. So here's the simple passing around the horn, and Monk was squared away. Notice that he was his shoulders faced up, feet underneath him properly. No need to pivot or get his foot underneath him like the last one we saw where, they, where he was fouled on. Now Kentucky's got some problems because Isaiah Briscoe, who for the most part is playing the point today in the spot of De'Aaron Fox, has got three fouls. And I think he's going to sit as Robinson... It was a free throw. Well, maybe he's not sitting. Maybe he's just going to talk to the coaches. Just what you, want to, you do not want to do after you foul the three-point shooter leaving right. your feet. So Humphreys comes in and a bio goes out. Out a bio with 11 rebounds. Second one off to Mark, and last touch by Gabriel. That's Leon doing the work on the right side of the floor just then. It did go off Gabriel. <laughs> so you watch just going, not on the inside, but around on the outside. Nice little play. You bait your guy into thinking you're stepping into the lane, and then you go to the right because you're paying attention to where the ball is going. She goes with a no-look pass to the Robinson for three. Yep, that's the big one. That's the guy they want to get involved here in the second half. And the lead swells to six. And that should give Robinson some bounce at the defensive end where he can block some shots, too. Briscoe, that's not his game. Yeah. He's got to take some outside shots just because he's going to get some openings. But... Look at this. Robinson from Chiazza. John Calipari's got to call a timeout. We talked about the quickness of Florida way back at the beginning of this broadcast. How they like to blow things down the floor on you. Good decisions here, and Robinson just steady, waiting for it. Shoots the basketball, 38% shooter. And Chioza delivers one on the money. Most famous Miami player ever, Rick Barry. Back in the 60s, his son, Canyon, on the Florida team here. Rick not only led college basketball in scoring, he led the ABA in scoring, mm -hmm. he led the NBA in scoring. Try to figure that one out. It's not easy to do. And no, I wasn't guarding him all the time either. <laughs> There's his son, Canyon, who's played limited minutes today, nursing a bad ankle. Meanwhile, his teammates on a 7-0 run in the last 30-some seconds. And now Malik Monk's going to get a chance at the free throw line. The foul is on Chiosa. That's his third. That's and Chris Chiosa's got three. Pretty clear what John Calipari was trying to do after that timeout. Get Monk involved. And we got another break in the action. 15-32 to play. Jim, let's take a look at our AT&T fast analysis and the Gators scoring fast right now. Well, they really are. They're doing it in a combination of ways with one player, Robinson, doing the scoring. Chioza setting the table very simply, finding the shooter in the right corner. And then Chioza, watch him on this one, Brad. Every single time down the floor, he gives you the impression that I'm going to take it and try to lay it up myself. And what that does, it fakes everybody into thinking you have to stop just him. You forget about a guy like Robinson running the floor and you're dead on that dunk. Robinson, seven points in about uh, 35 seconds. Florida has made its last six shots to take an eight-point lead. I think Monk will try to cut into that from the line. He's got what he had in the first game right now, 11. 
15-30 remaining. Florida on the road, leading by six. I still think they're on the fly here, trying to figure out how to play on the offensive end without Fox. It would be breaking people down off the dribble, sets a different tempo for the Kentucky team. Gioza finds Robinson again. This time it doesn't go. And Monk with a rebound. So maybe a, a, a chance for Kentucky to make a run. And Monk got bumped by Leon and route to the basket. Monk's doing a little bit of what Chioza does down the other end for Florida. He's just trying to make you think that he's going to take it and look to score. And guys are turning their backs. Whoa. Could have been dangerous. <laughs> Robinson knocked it right back to Hawkins on the baseline. And with Briscoe on the bench, it's Hawkins now as the point guard, but he's got the pass to the right guy. Boy, that's the mentality of the shooter, too. Now he's one for one on the afternoon. <laughs> that's all he's thinking about. I just made my last shot. Forget about being four for ten. I'm one for one right now. I'm going to try to light this place up. Under ten on the shot clock for Kato Allen. And he answers. That's his first field goal of the second half. He hasn't got a great matchup when they're matched up. Monk versus Allen, even though Chioza's got Monk down this end of the floor. He's going to focus on number five coming off screens. Almost took another one. Got a pick from Willis. They do a nice job to get out on him. They want to move that way. Well, there's so much going on when you watch Monk with his skill level. The screens, the running it all on the off screens, the ability on that side to end up by using his dribble to bounce itself away. Where's that going? I don't know. <laughs> not sure if that was a pass or not, but it didn't look good. Here he comes again. Mulder. Win down a three. He'll take that one though. He can shoot the ball, has been shooting it well over the last six games. Came on out on the drive this time. Much better looking shot there. 19 for Javon. Well, to your point on Allen's last shot or pass, I think he was trying to throw a lob, but the guy who was supposed to go in for the lob got bumped and couldn't get there. I'm with you. And then I think it was just, well, I have no choice now. I might as well take a shot. Boy, you know Hawkins right now is just hunting number five to try to get him the ball. Chioza chasing. And bumping. And that's four on Chioza. So when you think about a scorer, look at number five down here and watch him go to work. Screen one goes by a second screen. Now you're wide open because Robinson doesn't react. Now he does the same thing. He gets it on the baseline, but watch how he steps away to create space. Uh, you just you don't really teach that. You wow. just work on that. It's just a knack for understanding how to get your shot off. Florida already with five team fouls. Out of bio's got to get a touch sometime today. Oh, maybe not. Leon with a steal. Good luck. Head to Casey Hill. Easy lay in for Hill. Well, how about Leon? There are two parts of that play, too. I'm right, getting, the, getting the steal and being sharp enough to think, okay, let's see if I can get somebody sneaking and stealing a bucket. And he does just that. But just when Kentucky made their little push, Florida pushes back. Long three. Yes. Four on the afternoon now from outside the arc. Yeah, Brad, put your sneakers on and see if you can go stop that. <laughs> Boy, is that ever a quick release. I'm glad I'm sitting over here watching them. It's fun to watch. As I said, I saw him put 47 on North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. turn over there. Yeah, he just lost it. There's the big guy running it. Yeah. 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 Well, as we touched on about 90 seconds ago, get ready for another run by Kentucky. Almost very similar to the first half of this game where Florida came out fast, went up, and then Kentucky made their run. And your friends are back. All 24,000 of them. <laughs> Kayvon Allen will try to quiet him. Not this time. Willis the rebound. You don't want him running in the middle of the floor. That's who you want with the ball. Monk up on the oh. What a skill level at the offensive side of the floor. Just unbelievable. 
The eight-point lead evaporates down to one. Timeout, Florida. Yeah, it's amazing. Eleven eighteen remaining. Rupp Arena alive right now. Gators lead down to one. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by your local Lexus dealer and the pursuit of perfection. Lowe's. Start with Lowe's. And by Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. Kentucky has 23 points this half. Malik Monk has 19 of them, Jim. And they are going to work. He came out the first minute of this second half, Brad, if you recall, and was really conscious of trying to get some scoring done. Now watch the way he's running with his back to the basket and turns to position himself well. Looks easy, but it's difficult to do. And now he attacks and he flips this baby up high on the glass. I mean, we've seen two or three moves that have been very difficult to finish on the run in particular. Well, he's had some of these, some wild scoring splurges this season. 18, 30, 10 against South Carolina in two and a half minutes. 19 against Georgia in a little over six minutes. And of course, the aforementioned North Carolina game where he just splurged the whole, the whole game for 47. He's been sensational this half, though. He's got his Wildcats back to within one. Hill back on the floor to run some traffic here. Joseph did a nice job while he was on the on the floor. Hill's got three fouls. Joe's on the bench with four. They'd love to see Barry on a backdoor cut. Allen in some traffic, a lot of traffic, and tie up. And it's Kentucky ball. Good job by Kevin Willis. Uh, Derek Willis, excuse me. Again, this is a battle for the top spot in the SEC. They're dead even. Ranked 13th and 11th in the country, both 13 and 2 in conference play. And South Carolina has won, so they get a little bit closer to the top than they snap a losing streak. They're going to run a double team at him or not. And now they go to the blocks. And on the battle, it pays off. Nice decision from the bench. That one initially came from the bench. Give it to Monk. Let everybody think he's just going to continue to run and try to score. And what does he do? He makes a terrific decision to get his big guy involved. Eight points, 11 boards for Bam Adebayo. And Kentucky's in front with 10 and a half to go. And Adebayo's been doing the rebounding at 11. The points at only eight, so he needs some touches. Barry for three. Got it. First score for him. Banyan Barry, and it's a big one. And a nice drag there by Hill, too. Bring that ball to the middle of the floor. Try to get everybody to condense. Squeeze the defense, and then kick it away. Two-point Florida lead. Midway point of the second half. Yeah, he's just going to say, keep your hands off him, because that's what he's going to do. He's going to bait you into reaching for the ball. That's four, Jim. On Casey Hill. <laughs> and now look at Adebayo Ad just then. He's got some long arms, able to reach over people, and he gets pretty good position off that one dribble. So if he catches it, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Florida Gator go in there and try to get that ball off the dribble. Next foul. Ah! Kentucky shooting. They don't need to go to the free throw line with that guy. 24 for Monk. Tied at 55. Boy, what an explosion. Not only on that shot, but also in this second half. Robinson rejected by Adebayo. And now you push it. Hit the wings. Willis gave up a three. That's a good decision, too, because Barry was closing in on him. So keep the momentum in your favor. Don't take a bad shot. Maybe get this guy to get a shot off. <laughs> Barry guarding Monk now. Monk doesn't even look like he's tired. And a foul underneath. Gonna be on Hayes. So you think I'm going to pull up right there. Barry lets him go by, and what a finish against a decent shot blocker for Robinson. Watch Robinson close. He thinks he's going to get it, but it's just too quick of a explosion, and then the hands go to the rim very fast with Monk, too, when he's trying to deliver. 21 points in 10 minutes. <laughs> How good has he been? And I'm not guarding him either. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to get a quick breather here. My goodness, he's that fast. 
and they would love to get him some rest down to the next TV timeout, which is a minute 15 or more away. And Adebayo at the free throw line as Kentucky is shooting from the strike the rest of the way. Three out of four for Bam from the strike. This will give him 10 points to go with 11 rebounds. He's got four double doubles on the season. This will be number five right here. And he's 63 percent from the line, Brad. But I'm watching him shoot the basketball, and I don't, I don't see 63 percent from either. You know what? I probably see. I probably see a, a young player who works all day long, all night long, gets a little tired, and then he gets a little bit distracted when he gets to the line because his shot is not a 63% free throw shooter. And we're going to be in a 1-2-2 two, two right now. Out of bio with rebound number 12. From Smolder against Barry. Threw it to the backside, and then a foul on Kentucky. Hawkins over the top. Even though you know Mike White understands this right now, he knows that Kentucky has the the advantage with the momentum. And look at the foul trouble that he has to deal with. And the other part of it too is he knows that because every shot will be a every foul will be a shot for Kentucky. Kentucky can keep running it right at him as much as they want. Kentucky's plus 12 right now from the free throw line of this game. Look at, look at this big guy out there handling it, but that's going to cause him some trouble because they'll be able to go by him. And man shy right now. Now he's gotten back into the defensive set. Robinson, Fingerway. Briscoe, the rebound. And a nice work by Briscoe. Staying around, defensive rebounding from the guard position. Look at the big guy. He's got a mismatch. They lob it on it. So Briscoe's been a little up and down, and we documented that in the first half, but just then he pulled himself back with some composure and recognized, and so did Adebayo, because he was waving those big arms and long arms to get the attraction for opportunity against the mismatch. You're asking, is Kentucky out to its biggest lead? You just saw the answer. They're up by four. <laughs> Getting it to the big fella. Sure is. And then what happens? <laughs> and the game summary, 29% from the floor in the first half for Kentucky. They've warmed up to 42. Part of that has been the three-point shooting, and Jim, most of that has been Malik Monk. He's been sensational. He's, he's been great, and, and you think about also the stat line there at 20 free throws for Kentucky, another big factor because now they can continue to drive and get to the line, but you're right about Monk, Brad, in terms of the different dimensions to his game to be able to score. You know, just a straight-up position standstill shooter off the dribble with a little bit of a fade, and here's the beauty up against the glass, and then he turns the corner, and well, three Gators are thinking about what is he going to do, and they end up just watching what he does. 15-3 to three run in the last four and a half minutes for Kentucky, and that guy's been most of it. So we're just under eight to go, and Kentucky, its biggest lead right now at four. Another team stat, his first matchup earlier in the year, Kentucky was a minus 25 on the glass. They are plus 14 this afternoon. Oh, wow. He's doing it on the defensive end as well. Monk knocks it out of bounds. And he was anticipating that pass, and he just barely missed it. As you said earlier, he's been in perpetual motion. He has not slowed down on either end of the floor. Jordan Allen been relatively quiet this half. Five and a half, 19 for the game. He's going to take a pass and got it. You know it's tough, Brad, when, Hump, when Hawkins is guarding him out there, and when that ball went through, he looked over at the bench and kind of said, "What do I do? Somebody help me! You guys are the coaches. Figure this out." Monk feeds out of bio inside. Love his composure sometimes there too. He could have just continued his shoulders going towards the basket, but there was a defender right in his way. He gets a good rhythm in this game in the last five minutes or so. Yeah, out of bio now, 14 points and 12 rebounds. Barry in some traffic. They leave it for Robinson. Nice hustle by Gabriel and Hawkins to come out of the pile with the ball. Monk. Leaves it underneath. Wow. Gets it back, and it's going up. That's as good as a broken play. 
drive the ball down the middle of the floor. Somehow he throws it in the middle to Hawkins, who get, gets kind of closed in. And what do they do? They go from the inside, not your prettiest inside, but to the outside for a very, very pretty outside. 27 on the game. 24 in this half. Kentucky, their biggest lead of six. Florida still out of the bonus. Take a look at the game reset. Six and a half to go. Number five, Malik Monk. 27 points. 24 in this half. 27 points in 27 minutes played. That's a pretty good pace. It sure is. For a guy who did not play well, and she was one for five at the half in his first 15 minutes. Heels are back in there playing with four fouls. A little bobble by Barry, throws the whole set off. A little work the clock down to seven. Chiozza, three. Oh, Monk way up there to get a hand on the rebound. And now to scramble. And it's going to be Florida ball. He showed you the possession arrow. So the Gators maintain the possession here with a fresh shot clock. Here we go. It's up for grabs. And by the way, did you see Monk get off the floor? I don't think you're going to be surprised when I tell you he has a 42-inch vertical leap. <laughs> he used all of it that Boy, time. He sure did. Got to get it in it quickly. Ooh, just in time. Oh. Avon Allen with Monk on it. So Monk's doing the scoring, and now he gets the assignment to match up with Allen. Barry, pull up. Rims out of two. Out of Biles, get another rebound. And so Florida will take that look. Nice setup by Barry to get his rhythm off, off the bounce. Doesn't seem to be struggling with the ankle injury that he had a couple games ago. Ball fade away over Chioza. Hawkins trying to tip it back up in there, and Chioza is going one on one with Adam Oh, that was oh, sweet, man. Adam just wants to get out of there real fast and run down the floor. That's one of those posters without a dunk. Yeah. Was well, that ever a sweet move? Out of eye on the other end, kicks it back to Hawkins, who thought about a three. Lobs it out of eye. Once again, it's both the attention that he is drawing to people. Barry off the mark with a three on a viral through the glass. Yeah, Briscoe's going to slow this one down, but keep in mind that this team, when Fox is on the floor, they generally get their offense going within 14 seconds. They've had to be a little bit more patient. That last dunk came with about five on the shot clock. Well, foul in the lane. So look at Monk, and look at the orange jerseys coming at him to think that he's going to block a shot, uh, take a shot. Hayes comes across, and then you just can't get rotation quick enough. Leon Adebayo down deep. Jim, you know the other thing? They didn't take care of the ball in the first half. Kentucky, 12 turnovers, so they only got one this good half. Good point. Very good point. So Monk back at the stripe where he's four out of five. It isn't, isn't it amazing, Keith Brown, when you're not turning the basketball over or you're not getting it deflected by the other team, how you can get into your offensive yeah. flow. It's just, it's a basic of basketball. And if you have a guy like Monk who can score, but a guy, you know, what's really interesting on top of his scoring, when you look at the 28 points, and we've touched on it, his ability to move without the basketball. You just don't see that skill level all that much and a guy who can go one-on-one -on -one as well as he can. It's usually one or the other. Chiozzo drives three. It's off the mark. And Willis a rebound. His zone has given them a little bit of trouble. They've switched over about two, two and a half minutes ago. They put Adebayo at the, at the front of their zone, the 1-2-2, one, two, two, which I personally didn't like. I thought the guards would be able to drive by him, but Flora has to really try to figure out a way to drive by the front. Oh. Challenges everybody inside, draws a foul from Hayes. And Hayes has four. <laughs> he likes it now. <laughs> That's the way I wanted you to play. I'm coaching you in the second half. I didn't coach you in the first half. <laughs> exactly. 
He asked Cal, he's, he spoke to him yesterday for a little while. This team is trying to figure it all out, you know, and they're young. And without Fox on the floor, they're trying to not only figure out the last five to six games, they're trying to figure out who they are in this game. <laughs> Now get out there and make two free throws. Exactly. 30. 10-point lead. First time today. Kentucky's been up double digits. A big possession here for Florida. Leon for three. Uh, scrambled. Knocked out of bounds, Kentucky ball. Nice effort by Allen just then. Just couldn't keep it in play. Bam out of bio, helping the smaller guys. Monk's been the man from the outside. Adrice, Bam out of bio on the inside. Big double double for number three. And it's a double figure lead, Kentucky. Don't forget Duke and Miami tipping at about 13 minutes. Kentucky right now with a 10-point lead, 3.48 to go. And we're getting closer and closer to the seeding, the all-important seeding a couple of weeks away. This was February 11, how things looked. And now as we update it, this is kind of how it looks now. Or at least we think it looks now. Goes, goes back to that whole theory of go figure, right? This has been just one terrific season so far in terms of who wants to command the leader spot. And I know the Zags have had their run, and Mark Few has done another terrific job out there with Gonzaga. But, boy, you know, when you think about picking a team and going against the field, which one would you pick right now? I'm not so sure there's a team I'd pick to go against the field. You saw Florida in that trending upward. Yep. They come in with a nine-game winning streak. That is in danger right now. And Kentucky's got to call a timeout. Whoops, there we got Briscoe and Kayvon Allen. Little shoving match. And all three officials get in there in a hurry. And Calipari gets out there in a hurry to make sure Briscoe doesn't get involved any further. No fouls called. So here's the spin. Briscoe does everything right. He calls timeout. And then what happens? Well, maybe he doesn't. His hand came across the no. head. Technical. Jim, we didn't see this the first time when it was live action between Briscoe and Kevon Allen. Here's another look. Yeah, so he stops, and you see that quick just then, that little left hand to the face, and that was that's what prompted Allen's reaction. So... This angle doesn't look too bad, but then you see that yeah. at the very end. And officials will have to figure that one out. But I, I think it's going to be a... Uh, I think Kip Kissinger got in there and saw the second part of that. And I think they're going to be able to see the first part on the replay. There it is. It's just a behind-the-ear slap. I don't know if this goes. I don't think he intended to do it, but maybe. He was calling timeout and then turned his hand and caught Kayvon Allen right in the jaw. And then Kip Kissinger immediately called a technical. But I think once they look at this, we might end up seeing it go both ways. They haven't given us an indication yet that they're about to. Kip's on his way over here right now to let us know. It wasn't an elbow, that's for sure. Yep, it's going to be a double technical. So a double technical point of interruption with the ball. So Kentucky will retain it. Both guys get teed up. That's the correct call. Good job. That's why we have the monitor. Yeah, I was gonna say some people complain about the monitor, and you know, there are times when it takes too long, so I'm, I'm in that camp also, yep. but you, know, you have to you have to figure it out and get it get it right, especially when guys are getting chippy like that. And everybody did the right thing, by the way. I mean, that wasn't really something that's going to prompt anything more than what we just saw. But the officials were there. The team kind of went their own way. So every, everything worked out fine. And on the stack, those same two guys will be 
against each other. Hawkins trying to get it in and just does get it to Briscoe. He picks up his dribble. Good time to just run some clock, but you don't want to run it to a guy who can score like Hawkins. And he'll try to score, but he got stripped from behind. Went the wrong way, went to double teams. Davon Allen all the way. That's what Florida needs to do now. They have to play in a hurry and make sure they're getting good shots. Good transition offense by Allen just then. He's got a little trick to him, too, when he starts to tuck that body and tilt it a little bit. Three minutes to play. That last turnover, only the second of the half against Kentucky. It was costly. Lost him two on the other end. Briscoe, left hand. Got it. It's always good to see a young guy who's struggling a little bit, as we talked about with Frisco, come back and really get his head together and make some big plays. He comes around the corner here. And gets it to go in. I can't believe I didn't see the foul on that one. It was just a flyby on Cleveland Allen. Allen. Okay, a little reach from the uh, reaching back. Florida's got the rebound. Guys are hitting the deck. Chiozzi's going 100 miles an hour the other way, and he scores easily. The speed helps a little, doesn't it? Yeah. We've seen two in a row. Looked yeah. like he was on his way to Daytona tomorrow. <laughs> it puts a little bit of pressure on Kentucky to say, hey, you know what? We'll, we'll take some time off the clock, but this, let's not go into a slowdown and forget how to play offense. And a whistle and a foul underneath. He doesn't put so much pressure on you with the basketball. Uh, you know, you, you see Briscoe, number 13, just then. He turns his back, running down the floor. A guard with this kind of speed and the way he plays from a mental perspective, he's going to just eat that up. Malik <laughs> Mark continues to add to his scoring total. Chiozzi just, you know, it's he's the type of guy, too, has an impact on a game, even though he's not scoring a whole lot. And this guy has an impact on a game when he scores a he lot. scores a lot. <laughs> That's 33. He's had three games of 34 or more this year. I'm sure he's not done yet. And they're going to need him, I think, especially if Florida can make another bucket or two. Avon Allen just launched on there and out of bias. Says, this is my ball on my court. Might as well give him a rag and clean the windshield up there, too. <laughs> That's up 15 there. boards again. Yeah, he's up there so long, matching his his number from the last game out. Career high was 15, his previous one. Monk up oh, under. Oh, Didn't get it to go. Oh, Atkins got Chioza out in front. Gabriel's coming. Not in time, though. Ooh, he may have hit Chioza on the head, too, as he shot that basketball. Risco trying to slow it down a little bit. Out of 140. Warren needs a stop. This is a guy they don't want to foul, obviously. Yeah, he looks a little tired right now, Monk. I'm tired of just watching. Yeah. He should be tired. Gabriel with a good decision just then. I thought he was going to try to go with five on the clock here. With a runner. Doesn't go. Leon the outlet to Chioza, and here he comes again. Hawkins has his back turned. Uh, did, you, did you catch that defensive play, too, by Hawkins? He had his back turned, that you just talked about, but he didn't call. He, he didn't pick up a foul. He kind of played straight up defense with his back to him, throwing Chioza's total timing off. Watch this now. He stands right in front of him. There's no foul there either, and Chioza just misses the layup. Smart play when you couldn't spin yourself around. Ten seconds. No, so Kentucky took too much time. That's just a that's just a youngster's breakdown from the thought thought process. And it looked like the Kentucky coaches were contesting that, but Blake Monk is saying, how, "How could it possibly be?" I looked up at the shot clock on the other end of the game clock. Doesn't matter. There comes the inbounds. Allen had that block by Monk. Yeah, Monk got lucky there too. I'll tell you why. Because he's talking to the official about the last call, and he reacted very quickly. Kentucky tried to take a one-game lead in the SEC. They're 50 seconds away from it. They were down by 12 in the first half. They were even at 28 with Florida at halftime. And then this guy took over the game, Malik Monk. 
Lob underneath, out of bounds. Well, for a team that had trouble coming together, they have put it together and obviously leading with Monk. What a game for number five again. Sure doesn't play like a freshman, does he? No, he does not. 33 points, 30 in this half. Kentucky will go to 24 and 5 and take a one game lead at 14 and 2 atop the SEC standards. They got walloped at the O Dome in Gainesville three weeks ago. The payback has come at Rupp Arena by 10. One point three seconds remaining, but we can update the standings. It's not going to change in one point three. Kentucky goes to the head of the class where they've been so many times before. By a game over the Gators. Fun game. A great performance by Malik Monk. And it's 76-66 the final score. That's it for Jim Spinarco. Brad Nessler saying so long from Rupp. Coming up next, Duke and Miami. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the 2017 Men's National Championship.